Look at this beautiful thing. Okay, so this is built with just mabati, mm -hmm. some wooden stays around, and then we've put in a liner. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're growing a zola in here, all right, to feed the animals. Chickens, rabbits. <laughs> okay, and this is multiplying, it's doubling every 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've taken a load today to put in the fish pond. Yes for them to feed on and it's already starting to cover where I took it from. I took it from here and here. There is, this is also called duckweed. Yeah, duckweed. Wow, this is so amazing. Very rich in protein. Yeah. Wow. What we're going to do is feed the Azola. It's Kudoga. So every day they're getting a Zola and BSF. Okay? These are quails. These are quails, yeah. Okay, you can see it's laid an egg <laughs> outside because in, in nature they lay them anywhere. Yeah, they don't have a nest as such. Okay, look. I can see it's feeding. Yeah. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Guys, just look at this. Remember, feed, animal feed is always increasing in price. And what makes animal feed cost be very high? It is because of the cost of protein, soya bean, uh, silverfish. But look here, we have a plant that multiplies rapidly and multiplies 10 times in just 48 hours and it is the major source of protein supplement in our animals if you're new to our youtube channel guys kindly hit the subscribe button like and share we dive and dig deeper into this project the azola farming or duckweed farming and we are with the pro in the house, Mr. Langat of Nourisha Farms in Machakos County. Let's go in and enjoy. Welcome, M. Agrikaja. So this is the Azola side, or the another name is Dagweed, whereby uh, we are planting this kind of fun. And uh, it is also another fodder crop for the animals as well as poultry. Okay, Azola is the uh, a water plant or aquatic plants which normally grows on the surface of the water and uh, it does many uses. Azola, first of all, uh, uh, we introduce here as a mean of recycling waste uh, packets or waste tanks and whatever you are not using so long as it can hold water. So for the Azola, we introduce here for use especially for poultry. We have also cattle. Uh, we have also the fish as well, especially the tilapia. Tilapia no, normally love the azola. Normally when you want to start the uh, azola farming, the first thing you must source is the seeds or you must know where to get the uh, seeds from. So the first thing is to get them from people who have already established uh, their farm or you buy from them, either you get from friends or you buy from them. And then also you now come and start, so long as you know you have the good source of your uh, seeds for starting your azola. So here now I'm going to use uh, these small packets as a demonstration to represent the tanks I have here. So, but this is not limited to the simple structures you have here. You can have big bones, you can use dams and whatever. So you'll use any means you, you have available. So we have uh, many here, but I'm using just these small ones for demonstration. You must have the bucket, have a sack, that is for the manure. You must have also water, and then also you have the your seeds which are the azola sprouts so the first thing is to uh, you have to do is to add water or to put water in your 
trough or your packet like this so this the water but the the volume uh, varies depending on your desire and then the next thing before you put in the azola is the manure so here we are using the cow the dry cow dung like this one so i'm using this uh net to put them inside like that so these are the cow manure you can see so this is to add nutrients or to feed your asola and then uh, Another thing which I'm adding here is a, a load. I'll just put uh, one thing. Uh, this is a small stone. For example, this just to allow them sink into your container like that. And then after putting everything in like that, you just now tight make it enclosed so that it does not come to the top to interfere with your harvesting especially when you want to uh, get the asola for your normal uh, use so this is one so you tie it like that if it is a big sack uh, you can tie it i have one inside here i'll show you later so we have uh, like that and then you put it so you can see this submerge so it does not come to the it doesn't uh, float in short and then so after setting it like that you now introduce the asola let me use this uh, new one so these are the asola so you you just use the normal asola but you use uh, any small quantity so this the one i have added like that this very simple imagine so you can just uh, put them in the top and then you allow nature to take its own course. They will multiply on their own and then it will give you the feed each time you need them. Whenever starting a Zola farming, you normally start small and uh, as you also succeed in one, you increase. So like these uh, small containers here, the troughs, the, 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 the three troughs, this is where we started up our Azola. And uh, after succeeding, we then go around and then we build other uh, Azola uh, troughs and also the tanks. Like this one also, we build it after uh, being successful with this one. So we made this one about three meters by two meters and uh, we've seen it uh, doing very well and also we have uh, inside we have the small fish and then also we have some other tanks you guys you can see we have uh, other uh, five small tanks uh, except, um, apart from this one and then uh, after succeeding we also move all the way that is why we can have more big tanks um, going downwards so we have uh, down there we have five of them and uh, with that five of them one already we've uh, started uh, keeping the catfish and uh, but uh, if you want to keep your tilapia you can as well do because um, this is the best feed for the tilapia and uh, so with this all these three we have a solar in all of them and um, why are we interested in a solar this is because it will enable us to keep fish that is for uh nutrition and then as well as also uh food for the poultry and also the animals so that is why we are also increasing our production how do we increase production by building more uh, more uh, areas for planting so we have increased all these areas those small tanks that is for the aim of having the asola and not only asola we are also looking into fish farming. Um, here we've got five trays of Zola growing and we've just put in 200 catfish into there so that yeah so the catfish will grow they're being fed on um, on uh, maize bran at the moment and then we will put 50 in each thing to grow up. Now um, catfish don't eat Zola so we can grow the azola over the top and we'll get our own meat. Yeah. Azola uh, itself mostly is used in most of the countries. And then also azola is in the genus of the family of fan, 
which normally cross in water. And then also with this one, it is a leguminous crop which can as well fix nitrogen either to the soil or to the or to the water. And then also for their solar, uh, normally they like either partial or even uh, but not very sunny area. So shaded area is okay. That is why if you see the side where I'm standing, we have the shade nets um, uh, roofing this side. And then also we have uh, for their solar also, we can use them in so many ways. As we say that uh, in, in the side of Pamakalia, we normally say every element have got more than one function. That means their solar itself has got several uh, functions. It is very rich in protein. They have also the amino acids as well as also the vitamin. They are green, so they contain vitamin. They are legume and then also so it contains the protein and also the uh, which is also good for the growth of the animals as well as milk production and uh, also egg production. So for their solar uh, when we have them here in tanks, they have also about two functions. One is to control the mosquitoes in this uh, uh, container or trough. Why? Because um, normally when mosquitoes lay eggs, the larvae cannot care or cannot breathe. Or it will also hinder mosquitoes from laying eggs because it normally covers the total um, covers totally the surface of that water. And then uh, another thing also about the solar is uh, it is a source of protein. So it has about 20 to 22 percent protein content in it. That means it is a good supplement for for the animals, especially when you want to increase the if you are doing organic and you want to increase the air production, which can uh, increase uh, air production for the layers and if you feed them to the dairy animals it is preferably you mix them with other fodder and then uh, when you feed them to the dairy, dairy animals they normally increase me milk production for about 10 to 20 percent in the side of uh, milk and then also uh, with the asola we normally give almost 800 grams or let's say at least 200 grams of uh, azola per poultry or per bird. So that is the quantity which you can feed it to your uh, poultry uh, per day. And then another thing also uh, if you want to practice what we call aqu uh, aquaponics that is growing of crop as well as uh, keeping of uh, aquatic animal like the fish then this is the good thing to grow in your area so you can have fish like here we have uh, some small fishes especially but the small one the aquatic and then the other side we have also another we have a solar as well as have we have also the catfish or the mudfish so with this solar the good thing is that it multiplies itself almost 10 times a day or within four days in for the days we have it uh, multiplying itself for them that is why you can harvest today tomorrow you can harvest and the process continues and um, even though we have the asola we normally maybe after a certain period of time you also need especially to change water because um, it will reach a point whereby the production will be lowered why if you are using let's say salty water so the salinity in water normally lowers the growth of this asola and then also it will interfere with the nitrogen uh, production because these are the legume. Greetings Mr. Langat. Hi, I'm Agakaja. Fine. Doing the good job as always. Welcome to our farm. Guys, M Agriculture again is here. As usual, we never miss to surprise you. This one is also new to me and I'm also here to learn just like you, my viewer. So I'm not so much versed with knowledge on Azola. Yeah. This is duckweed, right? Yeah, this is duckweed. Wow. Amazing. Another name is Azola. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We are using it entirely to supplement protein. Entirely to supplement protein for the animals, farm animals, poultry, and also the cattle. Wow. You said here you have some small fingerlings of tilapia, is it? Or some fish? 
Yeah, most of the fish we have here is the, are the aquarium fish. Ah, so they are small. Yeah. So the aquarium fish. Why is it that these tanks here you've used yeah. are slightly shallow? They're like one and a half foot, one foot, eh? something like that. But those ones there, the five tanks you've used are quite, uh, I can say they're quite deep or higher than this. Yeah, that's a good question. So I can say for this one, first of all, it was the available material at that time. And then also this side mostly is accessible to most of the people, children and the like. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is shallow because uh, we keep them for safety. And then also we mainly use them for feeding only. But the other one also we it is higher because we had an aim of keeping the tilapia mm -hmm. as well as all other type of fish. So that mm. is why we have a bigger depth mm. than this one. Mm. Yeah. As the fish grows, it needs a slightly a little bit, a slightly higher amount of water. Yeah, a higher amount of water as mm. well as a free space for swimming. Uh -huh. Because this one is small, they can swim and then jump out. So, wow. But the other one is, is okay. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. 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 Now, I want to ask you a question. Yes, please. You said, of course, even even if you didn't say it, science, eh? azola is a, is a plant, right? Yeah. And during the day, it will use CO2. And during the night, it will use oxygen. Okay? When the fish lives in this water, I think it needs oxygen. And the azola is also competing with the fish for oxygen. So how do you keep fish in the same pond with the azola? Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have what we call the symbiotic relationship between plants and animals. Yep. Normally the fish produce the waste which is very rich in ammonia. Uh -huh. And where do that waste go? Mm -hmm. It goes to nowhere. So that is why we have the azola mm -hmm. to utilize that waste mm -hmm. and make their own food as well as also the azola become the feed for the fish. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it is a way of cleaning that water. It's and a then symbiotic at the same, relationship. Yeah, there's a, that symbiotic uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also, they are solar also, they are at the service. So they will not absorb much of the oxygen from, that is uh, below the service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that is the main reason. Okay, okay, I get you. Because um, we have got the leaves above the surface, which will just utilize the normal oxygen. The, the normal air. oxygen is at the surface, yeah. Maybe I would say, I'm not so sure about this because I'm not an aquatic expert. Yeah. Maybe I would say, I'll try to assume that if you want to keep fish in the same pond with Azola, you should not keep the same number of fish per unit square for Azola as the same as just without Azola. Maybe you can reduce the number of fish a little bit for Azola, is it? Okay. First of all, before I answer that question, uh -huh. The thing is, normally when we have the azola, mm -hmm. whenever you are uh, you decide to keep fish, mm -hmm. so if you need azola, mm -hmm. that means you'll either keep the catfish mm -hmm. or uh, uh, just leave keeping fish if you need azola. Okay. Yeah, but mm -hmm. if you need to reduce the amount of azola in the in your pond. Mm -hmm. That means you'll have to keep the tilapia they use or they eat the azola. Now I'm okay. Yeah. You have answered my question. That is the reason why catfish thrive in swamps. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Langat, when I look here, I see this azola is light colored, right? Yeah. I see this one is darker. That one is lilac green. It's yeah. between this one and this one. What brings about that? Okay, uh, first of all, with this one we have got the uh, different uh, nutrient content inside, okay. and then not only that, even though the nutrients varies from one to uh, from one trough to another or the area for planting, mm -hmm. we have also surprisingly we have two types of azola here. Ooh. We have the small leafed and okay. then also this giant azola. Oh, so wow. we have got two types. So with the, the with another one here, mm -hmm. they have the small leaves, yep. but the multiplication is the same. They multiply oh, so fast. They look so small. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have the small lift and then also the giant. As but well. if you want to, uh, to practice uh, this farming, yes. then keep the giant one. You recommend the giant one? I recommend the giant one. That this plant 
takes how many how many days to multiply funny enough okay normally 48 hours 40 they multiply hours. 10 times what 10 times so that means you'll have you always have a solar my goodness and uh surprisingly yes. surprisingly how they do is that they just uh crow fast and then they split oh yeah oh so after splitting it just uh continue multiplying wow yeah wow wow so that is how our solar crows the cell division is very fast and very high i can mm. say it so very high and also very fast so that is why you, when you have us here mm -hmm. you just come again and again guys guys we are looking at climate smart agriculture we are looking at ways of cutting costs in our production but producing feed that is food that is safe secure and healthy for us right yes remember when we introduce azola to our feed something that is multiplying within 48 hours two days four days yeah it's already within a very small area that automatically means that we will reduce on our feed and increase the quality of our feed is it yeah and also will reduce the dependence on those uh, commercial feeds because of you'll course. have your own feed definitely yeah. and thank you so much most for coming up with these smart ideas as a farm nourisha farm and thank you so much for opening your doors for trainings to the community guys i invite you to come here for training not only to watch it on aim agriculture page come on the ground also learn for yourself and remember to give us a feedback thank you so much Mr. welcome Manage. all and mm -hmm. don't forget mm -hmm. if you are not coming for the training mm -hmm. don't forget to come and tour the area you'll wow. see and so you'll be surprised with so many things here it is so enjoyable so make a tour here <laughs> 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 the organic part. We love you all. Bye for now. Bye.